source. It, and it's connected to another one over here. Boom. And it's spinning really fast. It's actually moving very fast too, at the speed of light. How about that? And as it turns and spins and is connected to every one, it's traveling through empty space until it finds an atmosphere. Because any, any theory that we have of structure has to include us. If it doesn't include us, it's not complete. So we're looking for the elemental particle because if we find the elemental particle, we can start constructing in a way. And it flexes. The universe is flexible. It breathes. I breathe. You breathe. The tree breathes. This table is moving inside, molecularly down below. It's moving. And what is the path it's following? This is what's moving. Now, as time goes by, oh, well, okay, well, why don't we just go through some of these? Let's go through some of these pictures. Keep going. That's the front of our trine ray. It looks like it, if we cut it off here, it would be like a tetrahedron. Now, tetrahedron. If we take, here's our little tetrahedron, smaller. So how does it make the structure? Here's the first structure of the tetrahedron. Well, this doesn't look like this, but it's because this is down further. This is below where we can see, where our microscopes can't go. And here is where the trion rays move along, carving out the structures, all along lacing. So the space between six of these is now this. Every positive, there's a negative. Every negative, there's a positive. One inline defines another outline. And that's how it keeps going. And all the while, it's breathing. All the while, it's going, boom, boom, boom. It's alive. It's alive! <laughs> another one. Let's go. So how did I find this? I found this from playing with a uh, toy that I ate. Patented and invented many, many years ago, 1972. Just these are the paths. Some of these pictures you're going to see, you can just move them as I go along, are the path of the trion ray. And as you watch it go, you'll see. So these are the toys. So I could take the toy stuff. Could be a rattlesnake if you just heard it. <laughs> and it came complete without instructions. And I sold it in every museum, and every planetarium, and every space center, and every major department store in the United States of America. And it says on the back, the makers of space clusters have limited the examples of what could be made, so not to limit your own imagination. So everyone had to come to the table empty. No one was an expert. <laughs> no one was an expert. Fathers would try and show the kids how to do it. They didn't know any better than the kids. It equalized it all out. <laughs> we have to be careful that our matriculations don't give us a false sense that we know everything. <laughs> we have to be able to clean the slate. I said in one of the classes the other day, I said, well, empty out. Forget everything you know. Oh, man, forget everything we know. Or what do you that's who I am. That's what got me here. That's how I make my living. Well, we got to surrender. So from playing with this toy for the last 40 years, building structures like Don has been doing in his living room and kitchen, and get that clutter out of here already, and filling up all the stuff. But building structures that synergistically expand and evolve into other structures we found, or I found, that from a spherical triangle, let's see which way does this go? Let me show, oh, this way, leave this one up here for right now. Did we show the abstract yet? No, leave this one up. This is it. This is it. 
If you take enough of these and enough tetrahedrons and you keep putting them all together, just tetrahedrons, they're going to morph, they're going to change, and they're going to become a perfect sphere. Not fives and sixes on the outside, but all the way to the core with all the different regular polyhedra created in the process. Octahedrons, wow, where'd that come from? Dodecahedrons, a combination of other things. Where did that come from? I didn't do that. I was just putting tetrahedrons together. Well, it said it wanted to go this way. I couldn't direct it. I could say, well, I want you to go this way. I mean, I have kids do some wonderful things. I have kids do, I, I have demonstrators, just like I'm doing right now, at department stores and museums, showing kids what they can do. And one kid, this is one you're going to love, one little kid about nine years old, is playing with my clusters, and I, and I had a rule, if you made something, you had to take it with you, don't leave it for me. You know? <laughs> so, he built a structure, if I can open this, uh, good thing I'm not. You didn't let him pick. He built a structure that I found quite incredible. So anyway, one day, you want to open that up? One day, I met Fuller, we talked about geodesics and stuff, and what Fuller managed to do was describe, again, the outside, the surface. What everyone has been able to describe is the surface, but what I, no one's going inside the surface. This is where the sea, there's so much space available that we don't even know is there because we are not going inside <laughs> the surface. We are just on the surface. Now, when I realized this all the years and years ago, I, uh, I sort of, you know, realized that, wow, there's some space here that we're not utilizing. What can we use this space for? Well, there's a lot of different things that we can do with it. How about making multi-dimensional silicon chips for computers? Let's take this structure here and miniaturize it this big. There'll be space between to let the heat out. You want to do electrical circuits and you don't want the fuse to blow. You don't want it to get too hard. If you know where the space is. I used to attach these to a helium balloons mm -hmm. and launch them. Did it all over the country. So as we take our spherical triangle, And we keep turning it, we will eventually get a full circle. A perfect circle. Now, this is how it started. A friend of mine took a whole mess of balloons, blew them up, took plaster of Paris, started pushing plaster of Paris in between. He was an industrial designer, and filled that structure up with all this plaster of Paris, hung it from a string, and the plaster of Paris dried, and then one day the string broke, and it crashed down to the ground, and the balloons were kind of withery, and the only thing that remained was the space between. So he sat down and said, well, how do I translate this into package design? Well, he got his compass out, and on a two-dimensional piece of paper, he started drawing circles. Some of you might be familiar with the, uh, with the um, flower of life. So he drew circles like the flower of life. Well, the trick in packaging design is to know where to cut and where to score. Now, if you know where to cut and you know where to score, you can make something two-dimensional, three-dimensional. So he started making those. So what he did was he took two of those and uh, where's this? Okay. And put two of them together. This is on the cut side. Here, we got two of them together. Simple. This is simple, folks. This is children's play. You know, Einstein said the basic concept of science should be able to be explained in language understood by everyone. I gotta tell you the truth. I've heard a lot of things here that I don't understand. <laughs> <I've> <laughs> and a lot of other people don't understand. 
So how do you put it into a language that everyone can understand? Well, for me to do that, because I went to the corporations, I went to everybody, I got something hot, I'm gonna get money from these guys, we're gonna build this, we're gonna build that, you don't know that. <laughs> Not invented here, 